So just thinking out loud here, before we dive into any more of these temple mounds, I would just like to recap or summarize where we're going with this. I know I'm not the only one who is very aware of what is happening all across our country, or the earth really, from politically, physically, and spiritually speaking. I believe that we can all agree there are multiple reasons behind the powers that be and what they want with these lands, and multiple reasons why they wish to keep the details thereof secret. What I have noticed in reading about some of these mounds are the things these sites have in common, like their location and proximity to where large blood sacrifices have been committed, either in the form of war, rituals, or genocide. Also, their location and proximity to cemeteries, prisons, or insane asylums. There is a significance to all of this. So as we move forward, I would like to examine that angle further. There are many organizations, entities, committees, councils, or boards that govern in part many of these sites or lands. And by that, I mean they decide how the funding will not only be administered, but regulated, all at our expense, of course. I'm also looking at the global entities that have claimed ownership over some of these sites, like the United Nations, for example, with UNESCO, and the laws that these entities have changed with regards to these sites they still dictate what happens on these lands. My question is, by whose authority? All of these things are connected in some form or another, and usually you'll find out the same bloodlines are behind all of it. I mean, do we really believe that our country is only a little over 200 years old? Wasn't the earth all created at the same time? Which leads to the question, what do you think our history really is, especially if we've been lied to by the powers that be? Let me just drop a few of these global, national, and state-level entities that govern our lands, either in part or whole, because you have to see how these entities are networked. First, UNESCO. They claim, as you can see here, that they are, quote, a specialized agency of the United Nations aimed at promoting world peace and security through international cooperation in education, arts, sciences, and culture, close quote. Now let's read between their lines. They were created in 1945 as the successor to the League of Nations International Committee on Intellectual Cooperation, or ICIC. And that is a mouthful right there, my friends. <laughs> what does that mean? Besides, how many councils, committees, boards, organizations, etc., etc., can they create to hide the true work they are doing within these entities? And all of the properties once held by this advisory to the League of Nations was passed on to UNESCO. And why is that important? Well, the headquarters for this global entity is in Paris, France. Why does any entity headquartered in another country have property rights, or even property say, located here in America? And how is that legal? This ICIC was in operation from 1922 to 1946. It's interesting that it morphed into UNESCO at the tail end of World War II, changing its name, making it more difficult to track or to keep up with, at least by the general public. 
and the World Heritage Sites that UNESCO is over have, quote, legal international protection, close quote, through UNESCO. International protection through a sovereign nation? How does that legally work? How can an international entity provide protection or anything else in a sovereign nation or country? How is any of that legal? To stay on topic here, let's move on to the Bureau of Land Management, or BLM. So the BLM is an agency within the United States Department of Interior responsible for administering federal lands with oversight of over 247 million acres. So remind me again, how is there a population problem if there's this many millions of acres that our government is overseeing? Anyway, this entity was also created in 1946 on the tail end of World War II. Do we see a reoccurring theme here? Not surprising that President Harry Truman created this agency with its headquarters being in Washington, D.C., and it manages nearly 700 million acres of subsurface mineral estate located beneath federal, state, and private lands severed from their surface rights by the Homestead Act of 1862. And if you'll notice, most of the Bureau of Land Management public lands are located in 12 western states. So as I'm working through my information on the mounds, we're going to look at some of them specifically, one by one. Some locations yield more details, artifacts, and information than others. Some of these mounds have been and will be filmed on location, which usually always provides or yields more details. And so the next state we're looking at is Mississippi. Mississippi has a large number of these mounds scattered throughout the state with a high concentration located in close proximity to the Mississippi River, which borders the entire west side of the Mississippi state line. And let me point out, the Mississippi River is not only the largest river in the U.S., but the second longest river in North America. What's most notable to me is that this state has a lot of these ancient earthen works, along with a few other states that focus along this river in particular. And our science community has put an emphasis on a culture stemming from this state that is connected to these ancient earthen works 